At the turn off to Lake Bennett, a placid weekend getaway for Darwin 9 to 5ers, a sign has been hammered into the shoulder of the Stewart Highway. It poses the question, what happened to Richard Rowe? It's a question which, more than two years since the unemployed Northern Territory concreters' disappearance and in spite of a $250,000 reward for information, detectives still have no firm answer to. A few clicks from the Lake Bennett turn is Cadogan Road, a red dirt track where herons and wallabies wallow in swampland and hand-scrawled no trespass notices ward off the possibility of intruders onto the area's isolated land plots and mango farms. On the last day Mr. Rowe was ever seen alive, it was down here he was spotted by locals, his car broken down humbugging for petrol and looking a little bit out of it. I went past him going down, he was parked on the road there with his bonnet open, said retired firefighter Tony Smith, one of the Lake Bennett residents who saw Mr. Rowe on November 2, 2016. On the way back he pulled me up and said, you got any petrol? I said, nah mate, I've got diesel, I'm driving diesel. And then he said, you got some money for some petrol? And I said, no, I got no money on me, I'm just driving round to see someone. And that was it. Mr. Rose Blue Holden Commodore Station Wagon was later found dumped on the side of the Stewart Highway. His bank account was never touched again. Above all, Richard's family are desperate to find their son, brother, father. He was only 40 years of age at the time of his disappearance, Detective Sergeant Matt Allen said. It's difficult for anybody to keep a secret, so if someone knows what has happened to Richard, the family and the police want them to come forward. Mysterious gaps in Rowe's last movements Mr. Rowe's vanishing has long been treated as suspicious, largely due to what Sergeant Allen said were his links in relation to drug use and distribution. He had been caught up in the murky dealings of the Darwin meth world, circumstances which detectives believe may have eventually sealed his fate, and met him with a murderous end. Mr. Rowe, was known to associate with people involved in unlawful activities, Sergeant Allen said. But there are mysterious gaps in the story, which remain, as one Lake Bennett local described it, very baffling. Photo Richard Rowe was caught up in Darwin's murky drug scene. Supplied, why was Mr. Rowe out at Lake Bennett that day, 25 kilometers from his off-the-grid home at Fly Creek? And why was he spotted at a Palmerston service station at 10 p.m. the night prior? We have theories, maybe he was there to meet someone. Maybe he was there to collect something, Sergeant Allen said. It's likely that he's run into car trouble. Has he been collected by someone? We don't know. It's what we want to seek information from the public to find out, why was he there? 
from rugby player to heavy user Mr. Rowe lived alone on a bush block in Fly Creek. The suburb is a grassy sprawl of farmers own agricultural plots, families and hermetic types, some of who, as in Mr. Rowe's circumstances, are attempting to fall off society's radar. Mr. Rowe had a long-standing relationship with the Darwin justice system. He'd been in and out of court for decades, with a significant rap sheet of petty offenses and unrecovered fines. There was also a smattering of more serious charges to his name, including domestic violence and an aggravated assault charge, landing him behind bars for 16 months in 2014. Out in Fly Creek, the ABC spoke to one of Mr. Rowe's former acquaintances, who remembers well the first time he saw Mr. Rowe in action, in a heated brawl outside a now-defunct Darwin nightclub in the late 90s. He was renowned for being a pretty tough dude around town, back in those days, in his younger days, said Steve, who didn't want to disclose his full name. Early on, Steve knew Mr. Rowe as an opponent on the rugby field. Photo, police believe Richard Rowe may have met with foul play. Supplied, later, when Steve picked up a methamphetamine habit himself, the pair began to hover in similar drug circles. Richard was into the ice scene, Steve said. I actually bought methamphetamine from, a close associate of Mr. Rose. Steve said Mr. Rose Burley, staunch rugby player disposition eventually gave way to a different person. One of the last times I've actually seen Richard was a couple of months before his disappearance, one day while we were shopping. I was with my girlfriend, he was with his. You could see that physically he wasn't how he was, a big and burly sort of bloke. He'd lost a lot of size. I put that down to drug use, not looking after himself. As for what happened to Mr. Rowe, Steve is unequivocal, I reckon someone's knocked him, yeah. Someone's knocked him for sure. Rumors of disappearance abound deep in Darwin's rural area. Everybody sort of knows everybody, and everybody's heard the rumors about what happened to Mr. Rowe, including the myth impossible bikey links. As Steve said, everyone was sort of talking about it when he went missing, so everyone was sort of curious as to what could have possibly happened to him. The further the surface is scratched into the row case, the less inclined anybody is to put their names to comments about the circumstances. As one bloke sitting on his Southport porch told the ABC, he didn't want to get shot for speaking on the record regarding Mr. Rowe. A man who cited himself as one of Mr. Rowe's best mates and a brother, but wouldn't give his name, said it was important for the family to find closure, but didn't want people digging up things that shouldn't be dug up. I've got a family to protect, myself, he said. Mr. Rowe's family members were also contacted for comment, 
but have avoided media scrutiny since their relatives vanishing. Case tinged with difficulty, tragedy in January this year, anti police significantly upped the ante in the search for Mr. Rowe by posting a $250,000 reward for information. In the past, such rewards have only been offered in a small handful of high-profile anti-homicide investigations, including the murder of Darwin mother Carly Sinclair and the disappearance of British backpacker Peter Falconio. Although the reward was never handed out, both of those cases ended in convictions. The information, given to police since the reward was offered, has provided us with a number of lines of inquiry, Sergeant Allen said. It has been a case which has proved fraught with difficulty, and even tragedy. One of the investigation's lead detectives, Tony Henrys, a respected, senior long-term Northern Territory police officer, died in his sleep in 2018 aged just 52. Sergeant Henry's approach had been tireless, detectives will visit and revisit locals who we believe are associated with the Darwin drug scene, but despite 200-odd interviews, and despite searches with dozens of police officers scouring the land where Mr. Rowe went missing, so far it has proved fruitless. No arrests have been made. But a team of investigators from the Major Crime Squad and the Drug and Organized Crime Division continue to work on the Roe case full-time. And the ABC understands there are some key people of interest who detectives have interviewed numerous times over the matter. I'm not going to confirm or deny significant developments, other than to say our priority is to find Richard. We don't know where he is, and we need to find him, Sergeant Allen said. Police appear to be trying to flush out associates of those who may have killed Mr. Rowe. You may be eligible for immunity from prosecution, if you give information, the detective said, but that always gets assessed as a case-by-case -case basis. Plenty of places to hide a body back at Lake Bennett, the retirees who live in self-contained units by the waterside are getting on with a relaxing, tropical morning. Long-term Rajan Jill remembered seeing Mr. Rowe's abandoned vehicle on the highway, and said as the years passed, she continued to find the case very baffling. I saw the blue station wagon parked there, but didn't realize the implications of it, because there are quite often stolen cars dumped, around here, Ms. Jill said. And then we heard that police were looking for somebody, and we saw them looking around, spread out, on land searches for Mr. Rowe. Those who live at Lake Bennett have their theories, as many in the rural area do. Photo, long-term Lake Bennett resident Jan Jewell says the Richard Rowe case is very baffling. ABC News, Matt Garrick, if you had to make a speculation, you'd say, he's crossed the wrong people, Ms. Jewell said. Despite time ticking on words, 
Sergeant Allen said, these matters don't just get put on the shelf. We continue to investigate, he said. We've received a number of calls from members of the public, calls have been received directly to the police, and via Crime Stoppers. So, I continue to urge the public, if you do have information, give us a call. If you have any information regarding the disappearance of Richard Rowe, contact police on 131 444. Contact Matt Garrick More Stories from Northern Territory